Welcome to Mark D. Maker. My name's Mark Taylor. Today we continue with the owl. I kind of sped up through some of this and I'll do a lot of it off camera because I don't want to be too repetitious and I want to make it interesting for you. <clears throat> so here I've done the top part of the contour feathers here and you see this technique is press in and, and pull and I'll get into more detail with the technique when we do around the head. This is the wing pattern that I'm using. This is out of Floyd Schultz's book titled Owls. Here you can see an example of how this pattern is used. I'm just making quick note of the direction of these feathers. You see how the shafts start to gradually move outward as you get towards the tip. <clears throat> Here I have it sped up and I'm cutting in the shaft of the feather and you really couldn't see it there, but I laid the pen sideways to help that shaft stick up a little bit, make it look more three-dimensional. You see, I just turned the heat down a little bit. I had an overhead ceiling fan blowing earlier, and so I had to crank the heat up because that breeze would cool the tip. If you have a fan blowing on you to help the smoke go away because the smoke can eventually start to sting your eyes. Uh, it cools the tip so you have to burn a little bit hotter. So here I'm merrily burning along and see this right here, this technique that I'm using. I'm coming in on the edge of the feather <clears throat> and burning in just the tiniest little bit right here, making the edge, leading edge of that feather jagged. And the reason why I'm doing that is owls are designed for stealth. You can see here how jagged the edges of these feathers are. Now on a falcon, they're smooth, but they're loud when they flap. On an owl, they're jagged and they're silent. It is uh, really amazing that these birds can fly and you'll never hear them because of this little advantage they have, stealth. So here I'm just burning in some indicators on uh, the pitch of this, the little quills that go in on the feather here. And it just helps me to, uh, as I'm pulling these lines, to keep that general angle, getting those edges raggedy. And this is one of those things that you just have to put on some music and relax. And, uh, you know, there's some people that love this. They love burning in the, the detail. Uh, and 
some people hate it. <laughs> but, uh, and I laugh because if I let myself, I will hate it. But, um, this is my hobby, so I, I want to enjoy it. And so I'll put on music and try to be in a good mood and enjoy it. And I'm going to continue to burn. Now, uh, in competitions, the guys that that compete with these types of carvings, they really pride themselves on how close they can get these burn marks together. I mean, they'll, in an inch, they'll have over a hundred of these little burn marks. Um, and uh, they're really proud about it too. So if they, there's a, there's a lot to learn if you're going to compete with these uh, these type of carvings. Now this wing is done. This wing still needs to be done to spare you all. Uh, I will have that done by the next video. Now I'm going to work on the feet. Now I will cut these right about here. and reposition them. I'll probably add some epoxy to the underside here to bulk that out just a little bit and then I need to texture the eyebrows to make it look more realistic. Contour the head feathers. And when that's done, we'll be ready to paint. We'll be ready to seal it, prime it, then paint it. So here you can see the feet have been cut and I'm working on the angle to try to get those toes up in the air. I'll be removing the top part so the toes will angle up. Now you can cut the, the uh, claws, the talons, with a coping saw. Um, I use the band saw, but it's not the safest practice in the world to cut something on the band saw that's not square. So uh, I'm not going to show that. And for beginners, this is the word of caution. When you're working on something this small, this is a, a tiny piece of wood that I'm holding. Uh, it's hard to hold on to, and it's really easy to cut yourself when you have something this small in your hand. I would suggest if you have a Dremel, use a Dremel on, on this to shape it. I think you'll be much better off. especially for the newer carvers take notice how small those chips are coming off the carving they're very small small chips gives you maximum control the smaller the chip the better control you have Now you could always buy feet from a wood carving supply source. They have feet that are made out of uh, pewter. 
they're soft, they almost feel like lead. So they are posable. And if you're competing in the novice section of a, a big competition, they're acceptable. If you're going to compete above that, you have to make your own. So you can make your own out of wire and epoxy. You can carve them. Uh, there's a lot of different options out there. I'm going to try to use a combination of wood, wire, and epoxy to make these. Never made feet in this particular configuration before, so we'll see what happens. Now I may or may not use these wooden parts that I cut off in the final car uh, carving, but they are an excellent reference for size uh, and, and for what it's going to look like. I might do these completely out of epoxy or I could use these and use epoxy to fill in uh, the gap around them and uh, all the detail, the talons, and all that. Hopefully this video was helpful. Please like, share, subscribe. And I'll see you next time.